Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video though is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this special Photoshop text editing project, I'll show you how to put text onto a surface and change the text. Here is new text that I placed on here. Let me show you the original text. There we go. So that's new text placed on there. And then I have another example here. Home of the Warriors. Let me just change that. It used to say Home of the Indians. It's made a little more current on that with that little change of text. Okay, let's go ahead and walk through these two processes in here. On this, I'm not, I already have a picture we're starting with, which is this picture right down below. So I'm going to hide those layers and let's walk through the steps involved in this. I'm just going to put all this stuff in its own folder, get it out of the way. So I'll put this up here into group one and hide that. There we go. Okay, so the, we need to have a certain kind of a, a process to do this and just think this through. First thing I want to do is define a typeface that is pretty close to what we have here. Of course, nobody can compare the two typefaces. It doesn't have to be exact, but at least reasonably close. So I'll make a new layer up here, and they're also going to be doing a type layer. Here's a type layer, and I'll just type in surprise on this which matches that. Let's adjust our size and it transforms scale. There it is. And I'll bring the text up. So you get about the right size, about the right spacing. Let's see if we can come in and get approximately the right color on this as well. Back to our type tool. Apply that. And I can grab the color from anything over in here. will work fine. So let's just grab our color tool and I'll find one of the lighter colors in here. That's probably good enough to get us started. Okay, so we have our basic text size and basic color that we can begin working with. We now need to find a typeface that matches. So let's select this. Let's bring up our text. And we'll take a look at our text. Now what we have is a serif face. The serifs are these little edges popping out of little feet kind of things popping out. So it's a, a serif face. Not much of a curve on it. Just a little bit. Not much. Doesn't matter. Then it's pretty consistent on its thickness. So some basic settings in there. And I'll quickly look through and see what we have. That's not too bad. I could use this Baskerville old face. I could use this Bell MT right down here. That's close enough. Then just scrolling on down. Some of these would also work out okay. That's pretty consistent on its size. and It's a serif typeface. Any of these will work as long as it's basically the same kind of a look. That's all that really matters. I don't think I can find an exact match on that, but I can get you know reasonably close. That's all I really care about. That's actually very close here to that because it's a lot more consistent. So I'll go ahead and I'll choose that one. Looks actually very, very nice. Okay, we're going to leave that as is. So we have our basic type set up. And we'll come back and change the name on this and adjust the positioning. But first, let's see if we can match that angle in here. Just to get an idea of what we need to do. Grab our type warp tool. And let's just try an arch to begin with. And let's see, you have a vertical distortion. 
You know, a little bit of vertical distortion probably would work, but maybe the arch isn't the right one. You might take a little bit of experimentation to find just the right effect in here. Possibly the warp's not going to work out for us. I need a little bit of a vertical bend, though. Not much, just a hair like that. And let's try something else. Go up here to ed Edit and Transform and Skew. Actually, push the top over like that. And that's getting to be a little bit better angle, as you can see in there. That's getting to be pretty close. So the skew looks good. Maybe the size is a little off on that. But I think we're close enough to fit into our space. So I have my basic type positioning laid out. All right, let's now move off of the type and let's worry about this background area in here. We need to fill this in with something and hide that text. So we're going to zoom in and let's make a mask in here around this shape and then fill that mask. Now because we have all of this stuff in here, all this kind of staticky stuff, I'm going to want to fill this in with information from the pictures. This will be a, a clone stamp tool job that we'll be doing in here to fill this in. I even could try just grabbing some of the stuff down here and lifting it up to see how well that would work for fitting this in and then kind of working into our mask area. So let's make a new layer. There we go, new layer, and create our mask. And this time I'll use the polygonal lasso tool and I'll use the add. It doesn't need to be exact. I want to be just, just inside a little bit, maybe. You know, just pretty close, not exactly right on. And I'll just come around and make a mask. Now, if you push it out to the edge of the picture, see how it automatically scrolled for me. And just take my time, come down around, and create a nice masked shape in here. Then you push to the side there and it will then automatically scroll the picture for you. Finish that off. There's our masked shape. I can now work into that masked shape with the clone stamp tools to try to remove the lettering. Now because there's not much in here to clone stamp from, I'll have to come in pretty tight on this for the clone stamping. So let's grab our clone stamp tool. That's way too big, but I bring that size down. Good enough. So Alt key and choose right from there, and then I'll come in and begin to paint over this. What we need to actually grab from our background picture there, I'll grab from that layer, Alt key, click, back up to our other layer. So you can actually clone stamp from one layer to another. It's a nice little thing to know about. And let's begin to clone stamp in here and move back and forth on that. And slowly work in and get rid of all of that lettering. Keep on forgetting here that I can't really take from there any longer because I'm moving into those letters. I had to make sure I'm staying over here on the left hand corner. Once I have enough of this stuff I can then begin grabbing right off of the same layer. But you get the idea. Just come in, come in here and just do this clone stamp technique. And work in and just take out all that lettering. Now it'll take a little while for me to get this clone stamping done. So I'm going to pause the video at this point finish this clone stamp technique, then I'll bring the video back up again as soon as this has been finished. Okay, there we go. I have finished that clone stamp and just filled that in with that texture. Looks pretty good. Let's now begin playing with our text, and that's right down below. I can actually deselect this at this point. There we go. I'll put the text layer on top, and it's sitting right down there. So let's pull that up and zoom out just a little bit. 
Okay, so I want to get this about right. It's still a little low on the right-hand side, as you can see there. Maybe a little, because it's okay on the left-hand side, actually. So I'm going to move that right side up a little bit. Maybe even squish it, maybe a little shorter on this side. But let's do just a little bit of transform and rotate. I'll try just a little, little touch of rotation like that. That looks pretty good. And we're a little large, so I can bring the size down just a touch. But being a little large might make it a little bit easier to read. Let's fit this on screen because it is pretty small. And I think we're okay on that. Okay, we now can. So I think the, the lettering is basically in place. You know, it's a little a little larger than the original. And I could bring it down a bit if I wanted to, but I think we're going to be all right. Let's see how it looks once we change the name in here on the text. So I'll just select our text. Notice that even though we did the type warp and the skew and everything else, it's still text. I can still work with this as text. I'll call it the revenge. About the same length. A little large, so let's bring the type size down just a touch. I can select our text and then right up here, roll over where the T is, and you can actually roll that back a little bit and bring the size down to a little bit better fit. Okay, we're just about there. Let's now put in a bevel and emboss effect on this. So the layer styles button right down here or layer layer style and we'll be doing a bevel and emboss there we go I want to have a chisel hard maybe a chisel soft bezel on that looks pretty good and we can adjust the depth so it looks about right about in there someplace looks good. At this point I want to mess this up just a little bit. So I'm going to make a copy of this layer. There we go. Layer copy. Let's hide that layer. And I don't need the bevel and emboss any longer. You can hide that as well. It's a little bit bright. You need to tone it down just a touch. So edit. Actually image here. Adjustments. Before I do that let's rasterize this layer. Right click rasterize type. There we go. Now we can do what I want. Image adjustments, brightness contrast, which is right over here. And see if we can bring this down just a little bit. So it's not too bright. And the last thing I want to do is to come in and mess this up. If we zoom in, you'll see there's a lot of stuff down below here and up in here a lot of this pixelation effect and nothing on the lettering so I want to add some noise to this again staying on our copy here go up to filter and noise we're going to add noise here's our add noise dialog box I don't want a monochromatic let's leave it at non monochromatic let's bring that way down so just a, just a little bit of noise in there, not too much. That's pretty good. Choose OK. And I think we're there. Let's go ahead and fit this in window, view, fit on screen. And there it is. We've replaced that text and it looks authentic. It looks like it actually is part of that ship picture. Just taking some, some time with it to match the angle and to put in that noise as the last final step. Again, nothing difficult about doing this. It just takes the proper approach to get that finished. Okay, so there's our first one. Let's now move over here and take a look at doing this. Now, it's a little trickier here because we have text that's on a background. As you can see there, a patterned background that has a perspective to it. Let's look at the original. Here's our original right there. And I'm working on a copy in here. So let's see how this whole thing is done. So there's the original set. I'll put these into a folder. Let's get them out of the way. And there we go. Just kind of drag those up into that group and collapse the folder. Make a copy here of the background. 
this we're always working on a copy so I can always go back to that if I need to if I mess things up now I want to cover this with some brick in here now if I'm careful I can use the clone stamp tool and just clone stamp straight down but the perspective is a little off on that so you may want to come in and actually use a different tool for doing this and that's the vanishing point tool here under filter there's our vanishing point. Now it's, it's still sitting here because of course I have you know I did this for the demo to show you previously so you use this tool and then use that to create the plane which is this you just click in the points and create the plane to match the plane of your image that you're working on so you're matching the perspective lines and once the perspective lines are matched we then come in here with the clone stamp tool that is built into the vanishing point tool and I can clone stamp from here and pull it down here and it should match those lines up pretty well so let's just hold the alt key down and click you can see there is the clone stamp now notice that I still have to align the bricks up so make sure that you get the bricks in the right place you know there's as a left and a right position to the bricks and an up and down position so we have to be careful about that make sure that everything is lined up once I have that I can then come in and very quickly just paint right over that like that and it does a perfect job of matching that because it's, it's adjusting what I'm copying here and it's, it's shifting the perspective down to match my perspective. There's a little bit right there I want to grab that so I'm just going to click right here pull that up to get rid of that little bit make sure my bricks line up properly that's the real trick here and click there we go so we have now cleaned up our lettering choose OK so there it is before and there it is with the lettering removed fairly straightforward now just like we did with the boat ship rather I'm going to make a new layer we'll have that in case we need to work with with this and then we'll make a text layer right down below here and I'll type in Indians notice that's coming in in the exact same colors and size and so forth that we had on our previous demo so we need to change the typeface and change the color let's select all this and let's look at our typefaces in here what we're looking for is a serif face again there's our serif face relatively blocky and it has these big thick serifs with some flat ends so I need to find something which looks kind of like that it doesn't need to be exact but at least reasonably close so I'll scroll down now for this kind of a, a trick you need to have a lot of typefaces to choose from if you don't have one then you may need to go onto the internet to find one that's going to be a good match for that I, that's pretty good but it's not as bold as I need but it's a matter of just visually seeing what you have in your typefaces and seeing how close you can get to that particular typeface again if you don't have it you'll have to go out and hunt that down and that looks pretty close it's not exact but I think it's gonna be close enough so I'll choose choose that one yeah that, that's pretty good let's now match our color on here I'm gonna put this just above and let's select our text click on our little color area here and find a nice mid-tone color someplace and that matches the color so looking pretty good so far we're getting closer we need to match the size now and that angle let's bring our size down first so edit transform scale and let's just pull that in so it gets about the right size that's that's pretty good I'm going to skew this now so edit transform skew now keep in mind that nobody's going to be able to see both of these at the same time they won't be able to see this and compare to that so it doesn't have to be perfect you just want to have it reasonably close so there's that one skew and now I do this skew and see how we're doing angle wise it's a little off come back just a little bit notice that our spacing is a lot tighter 
as well. We're a little, little big still, so let's resize. And it's a, a process here of going back and forth on these until you get it you know, as close as you can. That's actually pretty good. It's, it's not exact, but it's pretty good. It's close enough because, of course, we're changing the typeface. Also, notice that our typeface over here is different. So it doesn't need to be a perfect match, just reasonably close. Okay, so we have our text. Let's now change what it says. I'll apply those transformations. Let's change this to Warriors. There we go. Warriors doesn't quite fit width-wise. So I'm going to do I'm going to going to bring the spacing in a little bit here on this. Just squeeze it in a little bit. So edit transform scale. To squeeze that in a bit. Now notice as I do this, we're beginning to get moved off of the lines in their perspective lines. So keep that in mind that we have those perspective lines you want to match as well. Let's bring back up, I'll just apply that one. Let's bring back up our background. So these really should be matching those lines. We need to do a little bit of a skew again in here. And as you can see, it's a process of working back and forth a little bit until you get it just right. Okay, that looks good. It matches the lines up. We have our new text in here. Now I want to change the look of this. There's a little bit of a drop shadow as you can see in there. So let's add a drop shadow to our layer. You can use the FX button down here or layer style here. Same thing. You're going for a drop shadow. Obviously that's way too much. Let's bring the distance up. Let's bring the size down. It's fairly small. There's just a slight shadowing and it's fairly close in kind of like that. Now the color is up. The color up here is actually kind of a red. So I'm going to click on this little color icon right there and come in and see if I can grab one of those dark reds. There it is. And adjust that coloration here so it has that, that red-ish effect to it. That looks nice. Getting a lot closer. Now it's still a little off. It can be a little bit different. Notice we have some different coloration going in here. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. I'll show you how to fix that. But I want to add a little bit of noise to this. So let's make a copy of this layer like that. Let's rasterize this layer. Right click rasterize type. It's now rasterized so we can add some some noise onto this. So filter, noise, add noise way too much as you can see so just just a little bit not much it doesn't take doesn't take very much in here it's doing jumps are too large I'm going to just type these in and see what we get one I think is a bit too much let's try 0.5 not quite enough I'll do 0.75 I think 0.75 looks pretty good there's just a little bit of noise going on not too much now it's too sharp in here so I'm going to blur this down just a hair it doesn't take very much a lot of this stuff is going to be real subtle let's go to our Gaussian blur and just a little bit 0.2 is pretty good on the blur I think okay the last thing we have is kind of color separation or is this color shifting going on it's a little, little brighter here a little brighter down there that probably happens as the lettering gets old on the building I can give that effect by going over here and using the burn tool and the dodge tool. The burn tool make it a little bit darker and the dodge tool make it a little bit softer. So I'll just find a nice a nice size, a little too big. And I'm just going to tap some of these letters in here. along some of these spots. You can see I'm just putting in a little more color on some of these areas in here. Just messing up the color a little bit. So it has some color variation going on. 
throughout there. There's just this little taps, and I think we're pretty close. It's maybe a little easier to read than that. So if I brought the drop shadow back a little bit, let's bring that back up again. You can bring the opacity down just a little bit on that drop shadow so it's not quite as hard. There it is. And I think we're there. Let's just put this into position. There we go. Bring our background picture back in again. And there we have it. We've now changed that text. Let's fit in our screen here, fit on screen. And I think that's pretty good. I don't think that anybody would, would spot that as having been modified or adjusted. It's a little hard to see possibly in here. Of course, we can tweak that by maybe bringing back our drop shadow just a little bit. Make it a little bit easier to read possibly. And maybe a little thicker typeface may have been a bit better on that for this angle. I'll probably spend a little more time trying to find a closer match on my typeface. But there we go. There is the original like that. And then here is the new one. I think it needs a little bit of a something. I'm not really sure exactly what I want. It works good at this level. Let's see if we can just brighten that, the whole thing up a bit. So let's go up here to Image, Adjustments, and Hue Saturation. Let's go to a little more saturation and a little lighter. There you go. It'll stand out a little bit better. And then View, Fit on Screen. I think that's pretty good. So there we go. That is how to come in and change your text again. As you see, it's nothing really difficult. It's just a question of detail and taking the time to put in those little things that will make the difference. Make sure your, your color matches, your positioning is the most important. The position matches exactly. And then to spend the time to put in those little things like the noise and stuff to try to match it into your picture. One question I occasionally get asked about these perspective techniques is, you know, is this stuff only good for doing what I did here? You know, replacing something on an existing image, actually taking something out and putting something else in its place. Yeah, of course, you can use these same techniques any way you want to. You can just create something in here. For instance, I could have put in a large white area here, given it a slight gradient, so it looks like it's a piece of paper tacked on top of the wall, and put anything I want to on that using the perspective and distortion tools to adjust the image to fit. So you do have that ability to put other things in here as well. It really depends upon what it is that you want to do. You know, you're not limited to just doing text like we did here. It really is a way of thinking about putting things into a perspective plane, which is what we're talking about right there. The main trick on this particular image, of course, was to match the bricks, and that's where that vanishing point tool came in very, very handy to do that brick match. But we didn't need to use that. I could have done just clone stamp and stamped over that carefully and gotten away with that mostly because, of course, it's in behind something new, which will hide any little errors or mistakes on there. So it wouldn't be that visible or that apparent. If I was putting something new in here, then that's no real big deal. Just take your selection, your, your polygonal tool, for instance, and come in and make a selection that just fits into that space. Kind of like that. And then I could fill that selection with whatever I wanted to even place in an image inside there and use the different transform tools to distort that image into that proper perspective. One way if you have a regular picture to distort it in, it's real easy, is just to use the distort tool right here and simply, if we know where the corners are, simply drag the corners up to those corners. It will then match that perspective exactly. So there we go. As you can see, it's a you know, fairly nice way of approaching an image if you want to put something into perspective is really about just paying attention to your perspective lines when you're doing that and taking the time to make the adjustments you need to match your image to those perspective lines. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.